Welcome to Pico Genius, where science, electronics, and microcontrollers converge. Uh, we are going to um, we are going to look at part two of interfacing the Pico Pi to National Instruments Lab View. In part one, we talked about the Lab View um, graphical design environment, uh, where you can build virtual instruments on your PC with. Uh, graphical uh, programming language and we talked about um, characteristics of the Raspberry Pico Pi and uh, all of the capabilities that, that that microcontroller has. You'll remember from part one we built um, a small circuit that uh, that collected data from a potentiometer from an internal temperature sensor on the Pico Pi and from a push button on the breadboard here. All of that was uh, sent through an I2C interface to uh, an LCD display. This, uh, this time what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of the LCD display and in its place we're going to put a UART. That UART will be connected to uh, the USB port of a of a PC, and that PC will be running a uh, LabVIEW uh, instrument interface. Um, we're going to keep the same potentiometer, internal uh, temperature sensor, and push button for data. That will be collected and uh, and sent through the UART to the Lab Windows interface. Lab Windows will parse those values out and uh, display them on the individual instruments uh, <clears throat> on the LabVIEW interface. Before we talk about LabVIEW, I want to do a quick uh, recap of the code for the LCD uh, project. Um, we um, imported the libraries that we needed for the analog digital computer, or a converter, uh, the pin assignments, um, some timers, and the uh, I2C interface. Then we initialized the I2C, I2C interface. Um, we defined the temperature sensor on ADC4. We defined the pot on ADC28. Uh, and 28 is a is a GPIO address, not a physical PIN address, remember. And in addition, uh, we defined uh, the push button um, to be on pin 12 of the GPIO. Um, we initialized the I2C uh, serial interface, and then uh, then we established a function, and this function, uh, the job of this function is to read the internal temperature sensor, convert it to a voltage, and then to uh, degrees Celsius. Um, this function will be called from this um, while loop. So the while loop, the first thing it does is call the, the um, temperature, um, Celsius temperature function, gets that value, converts it uh, to to uh, also Fahrenheit, which we don't actually use in the program. Then uh, it reads the potentiometer and scales the potentiometer for um, showing uh, between 0 and 50 on the meter in the lab uh, view interface couple of lines of code here ensure that the value on the pot always remains positive. Then uh, we define the button. If the button is not pressed, it will have a value of 10. If the button is pressed, it will have a value of 20. So uh, once we do that, um,
Uh, then we wrote the values of the um, temperature, internal temperature sensor, the potentiometer, and the button to the LCD display. And then we cleared the display and we looped. All right, that was for the LCD display. Very few changes were made uh, to make this work with um, with LabVIEW. Most all of the uh, information that you're going to need to to be to accomplish this lab is going to be associated with the LabVIEW interface. But as you can see, we imported the libraries here, defined uh, the pins on the microcontroller. Um, we have the same uh, function for getting the uh, temperature from the um, from the internal uh, temperature sensor on the Pico Pi. Um, we set up our UART for 9600 baud, and we uh, are assuming all of the um, all of the standard. Uh, parameters for a UART which we'll explain when we get to the LabVIEW interface and then we go into a loop. In the loop uh, we get the temperature in Celsius, we read the pot, um, we make sure that the pot remains positive, then we define the push button as 10 when it's not pushed and 20 when it is. We have a little bit of code here, an if statement that ensures that if the value on the pot is less than 10 that uh, it's still two characters because we're going to be parsing two characters in the lab view program and if it goes down to a single character here uh, then uh, then when we do the parsing it'll be incorrect. Um, once we've done that then we concatenate the temperature, the pot, um, value and the button value and then uh, I print it to the screen here and then I send it to the UART and I loop. Okay, so uh, very similar to the code on the LCD so if you remember exactly how that works then you should have no problem understanding this. So the main uh, objective of part two here is to introduce this uh, LabVIEW interface and uh, talk about how the program works. LabVIEW, uh, when you do a program, you have a block diagram view, which has all of your code in it, and the code uh, is graphical, and it has a uh, front panel design with uh, instruments that are associated with the code. What I've done for you is I've created a, um, I've created a commented version of the code um, so that you can see what each block does. Um, I have that in a, a Word file that uh, I can I can make bigger so that we can look at some of the details in these blocks. So let me go grab that. Okay, so um, I can scroll up and down on this view. Uh, first thing I want you to notice is that there's this gray rectangle. The gray rectangle is how LabVIEW creates a while loop. When you go and get that graphic, it puts the gray rectangle on the screen. Any code that you put inside will operate inside that loop until some condition occurs or until the stop button is pushed. Okay, so the stop button comes with the uh, comes with the while uh, loop and um, and halts operation of the while of the uh, of the loop. So let's take a look at this program. Uh, the first block that we want to look at is this Visa configure serial port. What this does is it configures a serial port for uh, values that uh, it's going to see when it's transmitted to things like baud rate 9600 data bits. Uh, default to 8, parity is none, it has um, air checking, it has flow control all on the input. Okay. On the output you have a visa resource name out. 
that is the uh, that is the uh, name of the output variable that is generated. And if it if it throws an error, you can look at the error code and figure out what's going on based on the error code. So um, once the data comes through this port configuration, it goes into the visa read. The visa read um, reads a serial port. Um, the uh, resource name is the input. Uh, the visa resource name is the input, and the visa resource name out is the output. It has a byte counter, which which uh, you set on the front panel of the um, of the instrument um, that tells it how many bytes to look for or how many to read. And then in this case, we're talking about six bytes because we're we're generating two for the um, for the internal temperature sensor, two for the pot, and two for the butt. Okay, so that's a uh, total of six. Um, that value, that six byte value, uh, is passed through the visa read and goes to the read buffer and to three. Uh, scan from frame, from strings. The read buffer just shows the values um, of the data that's coming through uh, the visa read. What these scan from strings do is they uh, parse out the individual uh, variables and uh, pass those to the instruments. So um, if you look at these there are three of these scanned from strings. The top one parses out uh, the two temperature characters. The middle one parses out the two pot, uh, potentiometer characters. And the bottom one parses out the push button characters. So once they come out of these blocks, they're going to come out as, as strings. And the instruments want to see um, integers. Uh, or decimal, so we're going to uh, do a conversion from decimal to, um, or from string to decimal, and that's what these blocks do. Um, they take the two character variables uh, and convert them from strings to uh, decimal format, and then the individual front panel indicators can read those uh, decimal values. In addition, on the push button, since it's going to have two values, it's going to have either a value of 10 when the button is not pushed or a value of 20 when it is pushed, we send that to a Boolean operator and set a threshold of 15, so anything over 15 will turn uh, this LED on. Um, and as I said before, um, the push button on the front panel will um, halt the program execution. So that's all there is to this um, LabVIEW program. Um, what we're going to do next is we're going to go and we're going to look at a live demonstration of the program working. This is um, our hardware configuration um, for the PicoPi to LabVIEW interface. We've taken the LCD display off and put a um, uh, essentially a digital serial link to a UART, which converts um, which converts that uh, voltage format to USB, and the USB then goes to the PC. You'll notice uh, I have a push button uh, switch here. A potentiometer and I'm going to be looking um, at the internal temperature of or the temperature of the internal uh, temperature sensor uh, on the Pico Pi. So let's go take a look at a live demonstration of this. Okay as you can see um, this is the uh, circuit on a breadboard and uh, associated UART. Um, this is the Raspberry Pi, 
potentiometer, push button, and the UART. Now you'll notice uh, currently that the potentiometer value um, is at 1 on the meter instrument. As I advance that meter instrument, you'll notice that it smoothly comes up to 50 and back down to 1. Very nice. The value associated with the push button right now is 10, and the, uh, the LED is not on. When I push the uh, push button, that value will go to 20, and that will be past 15, uh, as shown in the program, and the LED should come on, and it does. Perfect. Um, for the temperature, we're at about 35 right now. And uh, what I'll do is spray a little bit of um, super cool on it. And you notice the temperature comes way down. And then starts to creep up on its own. So as you can see, the Raspberry Pi is transmitting these values uh, through the UART to the LabVIEW program. Before we wrap up here, I need to talk a little bit about the uh, UART hardware and software. Um, this is a board, an FT232 UART board. It actually utilizes um, an FT232 chip from Future Technology Devices International. And it's developed to provide a USB to UART interface. Um, the FT-232 allows a computer to communicate with serial devices through the USA port, or uh, the USB port, and uses serial pins on the Pico Pi and, um, and protocol in uh, the machine library. Um, the FT-232 is commonly used for embedded systems and robotics and other electronic projects that require serial communication between a uh, computer and a serial uh, device. Um, as you can see, the connections are very simple. It's just a simple serial, uh, serial port connection from the Pico Pi to the UART board, and you have to make sure that you have uh, have your ground in that group of three, and then uh, just a USB uh, connection from the UART to the PC, and that's all there is to it. So that's the um, that's the extent of the UART connections. The um, software that runs the UART uh, is located in the machine library which was imported uh, as one of the first uh, things in the uh, in the Pico Pi program that we looked at earlier. So um, I hope uh, that you've enjoyed um, this tutorial. Um, if you did, um, please subscribe and give me thumbs up and all the things that allow other people to see my movies. Uh, on YouTube. Uh, <clears throat> in addition, uh, all of the code and details about the hardware and about the project can be found at PicoGenius.com. It's my website. Um, if you uh, if you go to that website, there will be a link to part two of uh, of this tutorial and you can get everything you need there. And uh, until next time, I'll see you later.